This week, the captain and first officer of the USS Cerritos, Don Lewis and Jerry O'Connell, join me to talk about life on the upper decks in Star Trek Lower Decks. We look at Lower Decks' hilarious and action-packed fourth season from every angle, and we pay tribute to the Cerritos' fearless leader, Captain Carol Freeman. Gather your friends and meet me in the ready room for all this and more. Hey nerds, I'm Will Wheaton, and this is The Ready Room, your official behind-the-scenes hub for all things Star Trek Universe. This season of Star Trek Lower Deck sees the Cerritos crew investigate a mystery of galactic proportions. But if that raises more questions than answers for you, well, I am calling for a red alert! The spoilers are going to be flowing like drinks from the open bar at a Betazoid party. So if you haven't seen this season of Star Trek Lower Decks yet, put on your best Mark Twain cosplay, binge all 10 episodes, and then sneak your way back here to the Ready Room. I am so excited to be joined by two wonderful guests today, the incomparable Don Lewis, who plays Captain Carol Freeman, and my dear, lifelong friend Jerry O'Connell, who is the voice behind the Cerritos' first officer, Jack Ransom. We'll be talking about everything that goes down this season on Lower Decks and how Star Trek is a family affair. And speaking of Captain Carol Freeman, over Lower Decks' four seasons, she has proved herself to be one of the best commanding officers in Starfleet. Later, we'll put respect on her name with a special look at her triumphs as the captain of the USS Cerritos. But first, this season of Star Trek Lower Decks has been a true valentine to the Star Trek universe. We've paid tribute to Voyager and Deep Space Nine, learned way more about classic species like the Orions and the Ferengi, and seen the return of legacy characters like Lita and Rom, Nick Locarno, and that one other guy from Nova Squadron. You know, the one who isn't a nobody. This season sees the Lower Deckers get promoted. Sorry about that, Harry Kim. Someday, maybe, but probably not. And most importantly, grow closer together as their found family. We put together a special look at everything from Star Trek Lower Decks' incredible fourth season. And I'm so excited for you to see it. Control room, engage. I read one life sign on board, Captain. Unknown vessel, you have drifted into Klingon space. Identify yourself. One of the more interesting aspects of this season is there is a mystery in the beginning of each one of the episodes. You see a destroyed ship and it's a little bit of a murder mystery. The mystery behind the ships being destroyed this season in season four is crazy. And I have to say, the twist threw me and I loved it. <gasps> the ship didn't look like any Starfleet tech that they had seen before, and it destroyed a Romulan ship early in the season, a Klingon ship, an Orion ship. It was pretty wild to just see outright murder <laughs> in our little Star Trek cartoon. I was like, damn. It looked like they were just blowing other ships out of space, and everybody was being vaporized and disintegrated. And I said, okay, it's just a matter of time before we find out what that's about. In the back of your head, you're constantly thinking like, oh gosh, when's it gonna happen to the Cerritos? Oh no, I'm so scared. Who is it? Who could it be? Why would they do this? Spoiler alert, uh, Nick Locarno is our bad guy this season. He looks like Tom Paris. I don't see it. He's building an army and he very much feels that he wasn't seen by Starfleet. Jeez, why is he so mad? Locarno was kicked out of Starfleet. To find out that it was one of our ex-own Nick Locarno. It's a cool throwback to, you know, one of my favorite episodes of TNG. Of all the people, Nick Locarno, because he, he wasn't someone who you focused on. He just wasn't. It was really thrilling, honestly, because in my career as an actor, I often played the boy next door, the really nice, sincere, earnest guy. And I rarely got to play bad guys. In fact, the next gen episode was a rare opportunity to play a bad guy, which I loved. Clearly, his emotional behavior conflicts with his culpability. Yeah, he's an asshole. Nick Lacarno, who Starfleet's been tasked to find, he's just become this huge asshole. And as assholes do, they seek vengeance, they want to take over the world, they want to make people pay. He's being a classic Nick, Locarno. This guy sucks! What? He's an idiot and his plan is stupid. He's gonna get you all killed because he only cares about himself! <laughs> Luckily for us, we get a little bit of Mariner coming, helping, saving everybody. Beckett steps up, you know, she's always been this person like, oh God, what is she gonna do now? 
Somebody stop her! Had a girl. It's interesting to see her like stand up for Starfleet, right? And be like, yeah, no, I believe in this thing. I'm offering you the chance of a lifetime. You could be part. Nope. Anyone who only watched season one of Lower Decks, if they were to watch this finale, they'd be like, what? Oh, do I sound captain-y to you? Boimler becomes acting captain for a little bit. Really good captain voice. Thank you. This is literally his dream since the first episode. What's so sweet about Boimler is that he wears his, you know, his heart on his sleeve. <laughs> It's beautiful. He also wants to be the number one. He wants to do everything perfectly. Maximum impulse! The captain's counting on us! He just loves the chair. Barter by combat! Well, in this episode, we see Tendi fully taking charge. We've got this. She is stepping into her position of not only mistress of the Winter Constellations, but also representative of Starfleet. I'm a pirate queen, sister. What would I want more than a ship? Me. <gasps> she makes some negotiations that maybe she can't walk back. This isn't fair! No, but it is extremely Orion. See you soon, Devana. The episode ends with Tindy having to go back to Orion as part of a deal that she's made with her sister. This is something I have to do for myself. The roughest part of this season for Rutherford is that Tendi goes back to Orion. It's just brutal. This is the deep cut for uh, Rutherford. You watch everybody finally, in one explosive opportunity, be the best that they're going to be. To see them actually put in motion all the things that you had hoped all season long that they would do, and everybody handles it like a champ. Lower decks! Lower decks! Lower decks! Well, I am beyond happy to be joined by the captain and the first officer of the USS Cerritos, Don Lewis and Jerry O'Connell. Thank you. For Absolutely. joining me in the ready room. It's the very first time in a little over 80 episodes we've had a captain and a first officer wow. together. There you go. Look at us. And I think we're worth it. It's really funny being a first officer in Starfleet mm -hmm. because every time I see Don Lewis in the real world, yeah. <laughs> I treat Don Lewis as if Don was my captain. <laughs> of course. I live with another first officer you do. in Starfleet. I live with Rebecca Romaine. Look it up, everyone. I'm being honest. Um I sort of see Rebecca treating Anson Mount a little bit as well. You're around. Wow. Listen, our captains are our rank. captains. Wow. That's, yeah, that's, this all sounds really, I, I'm, it's delightful for me to see you accepting this yeah. and realizing that this is now your life. <laughs> well, it, it is fun. I mean, you know, being a part of Trek, I know you've been a part of Trek for decades. Um, I'm, I'm new to the party. It, it, it's not only a family in our show, it's mm -hmm. not only a family, um, you know, with uh, all of our lower deckers, it's a family with you. I'll never forget, you were the first call when I was a part of Lower Decks and literally I have the text, welcome to the family. And yeah. it, it, you know, it's not only that, it's when we go to a convention. It's the largest family I've ever been a part of. I would absolutely agree. And each member comes with such uh, love and such um, iconic, realities to it and because everybody watches Star Trek for different reasons. I think the main reason is because of the diversity yeah. and how you see everyone, different cultures, different races, different species, different ages, you know, finding a way to be excellent together. And yeah. you were his first call. Nichelle Nichols was, was mine. Wow. And wow. because we were friends already, and I was like, oh my God, wow. you will not believe. It was, it was just so phenomenal. Michelle Nichols, that is huge. Thank you. Yeah. It makes me so unbelievably happy to hear that you're feeling that. Yeah. That you are feeling the familial aspect of all of this because I never want to presume mm -hmm. that other folks involved in the Star Trek universe feel the way about it that I do. A lot of if not all of Lower Decks um, pulls from TNG. I mean, yeah. we're, uh -huh. I think because our boss, Mike McMahon, um, grew up with it, is such a fan. I, I think all of our storylines, all of our- So many. All of our bad guys, I yeah. mean, all of it really comes from TNG. A Little bit of Voyager, but- yeah. uh, there's a great Voyager episode this season where all these Voyager-esque ridiculousness things happen. <laughs> Initiating programs. Chaotica, Clown, and Michael Sullivan. Safety protocol set to random. Random? No, computers, set them to safety. 
<laughs> Surrender now or face the wrath of Chaotica. I've described Lower Decks as a love letter to Star Trek fandom, yeah. right? Yes. I mean, it's very much, it's in that Next Gen Voyager, Deep Space Nine sort of timeline. You've gotten to work with some of my colleagues. This season's big bad, as it turns out, is Nick Locarno, no, no, voiced right. beautifully by Robbie McNeil. Yes. <gasps> Whoa! Hey, relax! Nick? What the hell are you doing here? We're gonna cause some trouble together. I think it is so cool because as we were talking about before, the Star Trek family, the Star Trek world, people have been watching this and there are still people around like me yeah. who have been watching this since it first premiered in the 60s. So we have callbacks to Spock. We have callbacks to every single machination and version of the Star Trek universe. I am a skin of evil. Like a puddle of <laughs> Damn you! you know, our boss Mike McMahon has talked about how Lower Decks is the downbeat of Trek. And so the references they make are not the blatant references. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, I gotta tell you, Nick Locarno is our bad guy this yeah. season. I mean, I kind of knew him as the guy who got you almost booted from Starfleet. You said that we weren't gonna have to lie to them. We all agreed not to lie to them. What do you want us to do? Walk in there and tell them everything that happened? He's the reason and I resigned in, from Starfleet. Exactly. We're talking one episode, man. Like, yeah. I mean, like, and he's our baddie all season. We have to find Locarno. Who? Mr. Locarno was drummed out of the academy for getting another student killed during a prohibited flight maneuver. Now, that said, we have some Voyager references to this season, and I want to apologize to Will, to my captain, and to everyone watching. <laughs> I don't know anything about Voyager. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, it wasn't required of me. Hilarious. I know nothing about Voyager. Yeah. Hilarious. So when you come to work at Lower Decks, they're making Voyager to Paris joke, Tom Paris jokes. Yeah. Am I saying this correctly? Guess who I get to meet today? The creator of Fairhaven, Captain Proton himself, Lieutenant Tom Paris. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill in a little little come gap on. in your knowledge. Okay, yeah, come on. Uh, Robbie McNeil, who played Nick Locarno, also played Tom Paris, which is why when Rutherford says he kind of looks like Tom, Tom Paris, Paris, I go Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. They have like the same face. They're identical. No, I just don't see it. Lower Decks has this attitude that's just like, look, we know how much you love this. Yeah. Turns out we love it too. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we're going to. We're gonna walk this unbelievable tightrope of like mm -hmm. honoring Star Trek and the ethos of Star mm -hmm. Trek and like what Star Trek is all about, but we're gonna do it in a real funny mm -hmm. way. Yeah. A big part of that is the relationship between your two characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially your relationship with Tawny's character, right. Mariner. With Mariner. This season, your two characters have lots of interactions with Mariner that are very different from before. Well, for me, I spent all the previous seasons doing my best to whip her into shape. Yeah. More often than not at my own emotional expense and my own peace of mind. Yeah. This season, it was like, you know what? I'm gonna share the reins with this guy. Yeah. But then it turns out that that just frees me up to now not always walk the tightrope, but start to demonstrate my own inner mariner. And you wonder, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. It's like when you find out your parents smoke weed in school when they were younger and they've been telling you don't do yeah. drugs and you go, wait a minute, did you just say that you used to, what you know? So now you're seeing that in Captain Freeman. This is sick bay, hangover cures, prophylactics. <laughs> well, it's all available right here. Just to get back to Mariner and sort of Mariner's arc and sort of watching her because yeah. we are her superior officers. Yeah. So uh, uh, we're allowed to talk about her here. Are we gonna say nice things about her behind her back? You know, uh, <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> we, uh, Mariner, it, it, it's sort of like, it's sort of like all of us and all of us in our careers and our lives, any issues we have, it's really us getting in our own way of things mm -hmm. and not allowing good things to occur. You know what I'm saying? So I think Mariner fights that, you know, and she doesn't, uh, and we as her superior officers are trying to help her hopefully captain a ship someday. If this show doesn't end with her getting her own ship, then what is this all about? There's some moments this season with Ransom that that I, I genuinely love. We have seen this guy who's just like, he's always blasting his quads and like, you know, checking out his chin and all that stuff. That's who Jack Ransom is. 
when he says to Mariner, yeah, I'm not going to let you get yourself busted down. Yeah. I am absolutely not going to respond to you because I believe in you. Deal with it. I have always thought of you as this incredibly funny, warm, uh, uh, like just delightful uh, 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 presence. In that scene, I saw this little piece of you that I don't see very often, and it's weird because it's animation, this little piece of you of like a person who puts their hand on the shoulder and is like, you're going to be okay. Yes. I really got you. I really believe in you. You know, Will, um, it's funny. You and I have known each other for uh, longer than I've known pretty much everybody else on this planet. I don't want to say we get old. I'm going to say we get experience, not only yeah. experience in the business, but experience in life. In life yeah. And, um, you know, I don't know when it happens, but it does, like, it's almost like, listen, uh, um, you're making, you're doing things that I've not only recognized, I have done. I'm speaking right. from firsthand. And uh, I'm here for you. And I'm not going to let you get off too easily. I mean, it's sort of, our job now, is it not? I mean, isn't yeah. it the, you know, not to get too deep, but isn't it the circle of life? I, I mean, circle of life. I think that's really smart writing yeah. because in season one, you get to introduce to like the full face on smack gob of who each of us are basically yeah. or what everybody sees from the outside. Season two, you get to see us take that into the next phase of, okay, now that you know us, Here's some more crazy adventures. See season three revealed how we start to handle dilemmas yeah. and try to understand each other better. Season four, Mike's writing to um, Jerry's point, Mike, Mike McMahon's writing has evolved us each and every season to the point where you start to actually care about each of these characters as whole human beings. Yeah. We have romantic entanglements. We have, you know, all kinds of challenges with our character, with our opportunities, with wanting to be better, do better, but not always getting it right. And yeah. we see different aspects. Like I never saw that aspect of you coming out yeah. in our show to see you as this caring person that's oh, not always focused on themselves was just really beautiful. When Ransom me. sort of gets that assignment, in the beginning, he sort of handles it like, oh, I'm just gonna mess with, with you. With her, yep. And it was, I just thought it was delightful to see that switch from, but I'm messing with you because you need to know what you are capable of. Right. Yeah. I want uh, you, you, you know, let me just say, the really <laughs> fun thing about Lower Decks is that we're able to get deep into what it takes to make it in Starfleet. We're able to get um, a little deeper in um, what the process is and what the responsibility is of Starfleet. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's uh, fun. And you get to see it from the lower decks up. So to that point, as upper deckers, wanna, yeah. I just want to recap some of the high moments this season long for the lower deckers. Uh, Boimler, acting captain. I've got this, but I want you back to take command when you're done. You and me both. Really good captain voice. Thank you. Come on, yes. Bradford is beside himself. He's beside himself. Even bold Boimler did not dream <laughs> of being acting captain. Tendi going back to her sister sure. and, and yes. like being willing to face all of that. Rutherford <laughs> in his engineering uh, uh, nano uh, enhancement uh, face off to try to get his promotions. They all get promoted to a lieutenant junior grade. Do you feel like you're getting to watch the kids grow up? Like, do you have do. as upper deckers in this cast, are you proud of the lower deckers? I am, as yeah. their captain, I am, because that's what my whole journey has been yeah. with them. Okay, calm down. You're here, yeah. you got through the academy, so let's stop all the foolishness and let's let's get to the next step of your excellence because I believe in you. Yeah. We can get this done. The Cerritos is not a second class ship. We right. are excellent at what we do and we have our own way of getting there. So I'm watching them be more and more accomplished. And I think that realization is what frees Captain Freeman up to then, you know, relax a little bit and, and start doing her own thing the way she's probably always wanted to. It's also a reflection of Dawn and my leadership it's skills. True. How, <laughs> it's true. Yes, how the kids it is. It is. It and uh, it is. really, we want them to succeed because <laughs> it it's a direct reflection of 
how good Dawn and I are at our jobs. And it's true. Uh, this is arguably the best it's captain true. number one combo in all of Starfleet. First okay. captain number one combo we've ever had in the ready room. There right. you go. Uh, do you guys right. get to work in the booth together or do you have to do your sessions remotely? That disappoints me so. Yeah, we're not uh, we're not together. You know, I hope we do a reading somewhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. we've done um, uh, we've done a couple of uh, cons um, together. Yeah, uh, right. We we did a really fun con in Chicago where we all dressed as our characters. Oh, it was amazing. It was yeah. So fun. Yeah, it was great. It was so great. I mean, listen, it was my first time putting on a uniform, so yeah. that was sort of exciting. But uh, we had to get all the the ranks correct, yeah. and you know, we didn't want there to be any mistakes, so it was a little stressful, to be honest with you. And to be honest, I gotta say this, and you would know better than me, because you've worn a uniform all the time, this is the only yeah. time. My pants kept falling down. <laughs> and so, when we walked out, you'll notice I had to like, do like a weird walk. <laughs> to keep your pants up. But I guess you have- I wait to see You that. have suspenders inside of them? We did, yeah. yeah. They didn't give you suspenders? Listen, my oh, suspender broke. Oh, you gotta broke. have suspenders. I, I was wearing, full disclosure, it was a background artist's uniform yeah. from Picard that yeah. they, that they, that they, they repurposed. Yeah, 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 that okay. they repurposed. Yeah. And the suspenders didn't fit my torso. Mm -hmm. So they were like, all right, just go without suspenders, go without suspenders. And Will, my pants were falling down, and oh. you can't have that in Starfleet. And by the we way, absolutely, also, pants do not <laughs> fall down <laughs> in the twenty third century. <laughs> yeah. Also, like Donna, I'm a number one. Like my pants can't fall they down. They can't fall down. And in, so I didn't want space. there to like be any like crack showing because yeah. then Tawny would have Mariner would have made fun of me. Oh and, man, and they you will hear to... about that for the rest yes. of I your know. life. And it was in front of thousands yeah. of people. Yeah. Shout out to Chicago. That was a really fun convention, but. Um, it was a very stressful day. <laughs> You've been at cons. Have you seen anybody in cosplay for your characters or oh, any yeah. of that? Yeah. 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 White How, hair streak at all. It's the best thing, right? It is. Yeah. It's yeah. Very cool. I mean, it's... I've never seen someone as well built as Ransom. <laughs> no, of yet. course. There's mean, nobody, like, no one is. It's tough to get this. You yeah. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. mean, they try. It's cool. Yeah. Do the oh. ransom voice. Seriously, oh. do the ransom voice. Oh, would you do the ransom voice? Um, well, you know, voice. I actually go a few, lo like, I, you do. I definitely go a few octaves down. I, you know what's so funny? I go warm. do a, I do a big workout before I go in. I lift, I'm not joking. I you really you. see you go in there just all uh, testosterone up? I do legs. Yeah. And I take like a male enhancement legal over the counter. Like I take a male enhancement like vitamin and I just like- Listen to that! I love it, I love it. I, I absolutely shave love for a couple it. days. What is he doing now? <sighs> it's easy to become a god. The trick is staying a god. He seems to be focusing on his buys and tries. Do you have any inklings about where we're headed in season five? Is there anything at all that you know about? Oh, Don knows some things. Do you? They tell you. They don't tell me. Well, Nobody I'm, trusts it's me. Be it's because I've been in the studio doing um, stuff and uh, recording. So wow. I do know some things. Oh, okay. Ransom's, Ransom's back, tell. right? Yes, you're back. Yeah, All of us are back. I'm glad you got to find Shax out this way. Shax is back. Uh, yeah. Dr. Tan is back. Every Everybody's back. So excellent. Everyone, everyone is back. I can say that. Okay, great. That's everyone good is back, and and there is more mischief to be had. I really appreciate both of you coming in today. It's so much fun to talk with you. This has um, been great. Thanks for making time. We really appreciate it. This love you, Will. Great. Love you, Will. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> thanks for enjoying season four. This season on Star Trek Lower Decks, the Cerritos crew discovers the negotiating power that comes with a good Mark Twain impression. In what Star Trek The Next Generation two-part episode did the crew of the Enterprise meet the actual Mark Twain? A, the best of both worlds, B, unification, C, time's arrow, or D, descent? Don't boldly go anywhere, stay tuned for the answer. Captain Carol Freeman is a lot of things. I, let's be real, she's all the things. A Starfleet commander, a diplomat, a scientist, and of course, a mom to one of the most rambunctious officers in Starfleet, Beckett Mariner. In recognition of her exceptional service to Starfleet, we've put together this special look at the Cerritos' beloved Captain Freeman. Who knew a bunch of criminals would hate Starfleet? I did, which is why the mission was a success, as I knew it would be. Captain Friedman is an amazing captain. Hey. Oh, he's good. You better run. Ah! Thanks again for the mimosas. My pleasure. <laughs> Happy hunting! Ah!
Let's be honest, that smooth, silky voice helps. I aced my hoodlums and racketeers seminar at the academy. Let me do the talking. And then you can, like, fight well, and you have, like, great knowledge of how to do things, and it's done in such a calm way. Like, that's what you want from a captain. Captain, uh, we have engineers who <laughs> Stand could... Stand down, Jack. I minored in archaic technology back at the academy. Captain Freeman comes to the Cerritos with her own legacy of excellence, of accomplishments. So she's a woman to be respected. Happy birthday, Captain! I might be getting up in years, but I still hold the Hydra Scoot Speed record back at the Academy. She goes by the rules. She does all she can to promote what is Starfleet and what's the right thing to do. Okay, look, will you stop eating these guys if we give you food replicators? Huh, I don't know. Can they make nutrient pellets? <gasps> Yes! She commands a presence. She commands your attention. Ahoy, Captain. Ahoy! I think she's an incredible character. I'm Captain Carol Freeman. This is my crew, and you are letting us into that party! Sometimes you really just have to push the envelope, and I think any great Star Trek captain has been the person to say, you know what, yes, I know there are rules, yes, I know there are parameters, but I also have my gut, which is why I'm the captain, so we're gonna do it this way. Star Trek captains are like a little bit annoyed at everyone all the time. Like Picard had that great quality of just being like, just a little bit tired of everybody's quirks. She was really strict in the first season. She was um, sort of intractable. Why are you laughing? <laughs> oh, sh she's serious. Go get your departments in order now! As the seasons have gone on, we've seen her let loose a little bit. And I like seeing that evolution for her, that we get to see her cut loose and be funnier. And in some ways, that makes her more captain-y. Approaching the mystery station, Captain. I hope this isn't a Romulan thing. I hate the neutral zone. Right? I like that Captain Freeman is, like, kind of silly. She said I'm hot! You freaking are! I got a hot mom! Oh, thank you! sweetie. I tried something new with my hair. She's tough and she's good at her job and she's a hard ass, but she's just kind of goofy. Like I always go back to her warp catchphrase. Warp me. Any captain that says warp me, I'm like, that's a weirdo. I like that. It's her heart, which makes the heart of the ship, which makes the heart of the stories that we're following. To the captain. No, no, no. To the Cerritos. Yeah. Ah, the Cerritos, I love you. This season on Star Trek Lower Decks, the Cerritos crew discovers the negotiating power that comes with a good Mark Twain impression. In what Star Trek The Next Generation two-part episode did the crew of the Enterprise meet the actual Mark Twain? The best of both worlds, unification, time's arrow, or descent? And the answer is C, time's arrow. Played by actor Jerry Hardin, Mark Twain, AKA Samuel Clemens, helps the Enterprise crew navigate 1893 San Francisco and briefly visits the 24th century, receiving a tour of the Enterprise. Although we've reached the end of Star Trek Lower Decks fourth season, there is more Star Trek coming right around the corner as Star Trek Discovery launches its fifth and final season in early 2024. Here's a special sneak peek of what's in store. The greatest treasure in the known galaxy is out there. What are you waiting for? Let's fly. Star Trek Discovery opened the door for this unforgettable new era of Star Trek, and I can't wait to see what happens in its final season. Being able to talk about Star Trek with all of you is one of the best parts of my life and such a privilege. Thank you so much for joining me in the Ready Room, and a special thank you to Don Lewis and Jerry O'Connell for sharing a wonderful time with me today. This year of Star Trek has been truly historic. We joined my friends, my family from Star Trek The Next Generation on their emotional final voyage in Star Trek Picard. Star Trek Strange New Worlds brought us compelling stories across every type of genre imaginable, including Star Trek's first and hopefully not last musical episode. And the crew of the Cerritos had us in stitches on both Star Trek Lower Decks and in their special crossover episode with Strange New Worlds. 
If that weren't enough, we learned that a new series, Star Trek Starfleet Academy, will soon join the ever-growing Star Trek universe, and Oscar winner Michelle Yeoh will return in a special movie event, Star Trek Section 31. And of course, Paramount Plus announced that Star Trek Discovery, the show that opened the door to this unforgettable new era of Star Trek, will launch its fifth and final season in early 2024. With its optimistic vision of a progressive and inclusive future, Star Trek will continue to boldly go where no one has gone before into 2024 and beyond. Until then, I'm Will Wheaton. Live long and prosper. <laughs>